Welcome to the Crystal Stanningborough site. We're rightly proud of our heritage and have a manufacturing timeline here at Stanningborough dating back to the 1950s. With almost 4,000 employees on five continents, Crystal is the second largest titanium dioxide producer in the world, the largest producer of merchant titanium chemicals and the leading manufacturer of specialty titanium products. Crystal has offices and operations in Europe, the Middle East, Australia, North America and Latin America. The protection of national and local environments have always been an important part of the work at Crystal. And at Stallingborough, over £35 million has been invested in recent years, focusing on reducing emissions and the usage of energy, water and other utilities. In 2009, £3.5 million was invested during the acquisition of the Healing Crest Beds, supporting Crystal's commitment to water reduction. The beds were first developed back in 1944 by Major Cuthbert Fitzwilliam, whose company, the Greatford Garden Watercress Company, purchased two fields north of Healing. The underlying chalk aquifer contained a vast reservoir of water that could easily be extracted. In 1945, 10 artesian wells were sunk to extract the water, which, at a temperature of 11 degrees, was perfect for growing watercress. Commercial watercress production ended in 1970, and whilst the crest beds fell into disrepair, water continued to be extracted from the site perimeter. In 2009, the water abstraction license already associated with the site was put up for sale, and Crystal successfully acquired the license. Crystal recognised the environmental benefits of the crest beds, alongside the archaeological local interest, and proposals were drawn up for the redevelopment of the site, including growing cress once again. Working alongside HINCA, a habitat creation and management report was developed, looking at how the biodiversity could be improved. This was initially confined to the southern section of the beds. Creative Nature, under the direction of Ben Burgess, were engaged to implement the requirements of the report, with funding for the three-year project being provided by Crystal. Gradually, the region is being restored, with scrapes and ponding within the bed areas creating habitats for amphibians and dragonflies. The overgrown vegetation has been cut back, revealing the crest beds, walkways and original infrastructure. Small channels, created to service larger scrapes and barriers at the eastern end of the site, are improving the vital water retention. Sluice gates and concrete channels have been cleared and the beds without scrapes blocked off to divert water to the three ponded areas. The vegetation has been compacted to landscape one corner of the site and the brash from trees now acts as a refuge for animals living on the site. So far, phase one has been a real success and phase two, due to start at the end of 2012, will develop a larger wildlife pond at the site entrance. Phase three will see the development of the northern section. Once the work is completed and the whole site re-established, it will create a fabulous refuge for amphibians and dragonflies, alongside other flora and fauna native to the region, and become a unique educational experience for young people from the area.